Yes, yes, yes. Let's chat. Let's chat right here. Jesus in Ethiopia. The meeting between the Father and the Son. Have you read? Have you gotten to hear? Hear, hear, hear. Jesus, or more correctly, Yeshua. Yeshua in Kush in Ethiopia. Jesus in Ethiopia. Iusus, Jesus in Ethiopia. Very, very interesting book here. And we heard about this before actually seeing this in, in print. Now this book here by Jim Ranking, this book right here, Jesus in Ethiopia by Jim Ranking. Now, give thanks, um, Brother Ross, Lawrence Davis, what you know about God and his chosen people. Heal up, brother, right there. He sent something here from, um, published by, um, I think it's Chim Tinkulu. Uh, Chitim Kulu, hopefully I'm pronouncing, you know, by his uh, Chitim Kulu traditionalist G. Malalazi of Global Original Heritage Living in Magnificent Native Culture Country. He published something right here, not the author of this book here, but reason why we're doing this here to share this with more ones and ones since I think more ones and ones and their research are coming across more Ethiopia, Hebrew, Israel, Afro-Shemitic as the Bible is a African, uh, African Shemitic book. Just to point that out there for the record. But this particular book right here, I think it was Brother Dawi, Oregon Cross-Eyed Cricket Farms that had actually asked me whether I had saw this book or read this book because something that we was teaching and reasoning on no doubt brought this book to his mind as well as we here are giving due note to our brother Lawrence Davis who had shared on I think a WhatsApp platform a, a little article here right by um, his uh, Chim Tim Kulu traditionalist G uh, Malalazi of the global original heritage living in magnificent native cu culture country this is just what is um attached to just a brief blurb that we have right here that links with this particular book but just for a fuller full here's like a full cover of this particular book right here there's also this one here that we have in i thought it was maybe the same book with a different title but i think it's actually a different book it's called Footprints, Footprints of Jesus, Footprints of Yeshua, right? Yesus, Iusus, Crushed in Stone, Crushed in Stone, Egypt, Ethiopia, Israel. This is this particular book here. Like we said, we haven't checked this particular book out as of yet. But the first one that we recommend right here, Footprints, yes, Footprints, here we go, Footprints of Jesus, of Jesus, Iusus, this book right here by Jim Ranking, as well as the other one, right, this one right here, Jesus in Ethiopia, the meeting between the Father and the Son. So this book right here kind of confirms what a lot of our earlier Earlier research had actually pointed to this particular book confirmed a lot of it and what we had heard from actual um, Ethiopians themselves, even I and I mother in law, you know, from that generation, from the majestic, you know, uh, generation. And there were some of the older, um, true, we could say, true church in the professing Ethiopian Orthodox Church, some of the older traditions that are dismissed. Right, but even more archaeology and more findings are making the links that the Ethiopia testimony truly, as recorded in history, was fateful. Right? It's among the Western Gentile, the Was, White Anglo Saxon Protestant Christians by and large, you know, that have dismissed, you know, dismissed much of the Ethiopian you say Royal Order of the Ethiopian Hebrews and the Ethiopia ancient biblical text trying to put it into like legend or even to um, um, assume 
or make people believe that it might just be fairy tale things made up but actually right, there's more to it as it says in the latter days some things were sealed up and in these latter days and latter times a lot of things that have been sealed up are being more and more revealed revealed up so I'd like to get into a little more details of this but wants to actually just share a kind of update you know on this right here Jesus in Ethiopia there's also this one here that we're seeking to get this is actually the Amharic right I think Amharic translation of um, Jesus Christos well here it says Jesus Christos to say Jesus Christ or Yeshua HaMoshiach Be Ethiopia Be Tobia Be Kush right here um, what does Ethiopia represent in the Bible, right? Well, it all depends on the matter of perspective. From a Western Gentile, it presents something kind of a little bit mysterious and legendary and, you know, almost like, well, that's what they say. But there's a lot of evidence that actually proves that this is the other half, the half of the story. Right, so Jesus in Ethiopia, the other half of the story that hasn't been told, and here, 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 I'd like to share a couple of um, first words right here. You know, even the connections of the Ark of the Covenant, the connection of the Israelites of Solomon and the Queen of Sheba's only son, Minulik. Right. So right here, 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 <laughs> going to pick up on this right here. So let's just share a little bit right here from this particular book. Just some um, samples right here of some related, some related subject matter right here. And once again, to the cover right here. Here we go right here. Jesus, Jesus, Beethiopia, Yeshua, Bekush. So right here. So let me get the book right here, brothers and sisters. This is the back of the book, and then we'll get into some of what is said. Now, um, hail up also the brother, brother um, Kadir, Kadir Abdi, you know, Kadir Abdi, who had asked us on our WhatsApp group, the WhatsApp group that we have. Um, he asked about, oh, about Jesus being, the, did, did Jesus, did Jesus have a wife? And did he have children? Now, we don't want to confuse that particular narrative. And we're not dismissing it. I don't want to dismiss it. But this is just a different part of the narrative. This narrative has more to do with like the first century time. So to our brother Kedah Abdi and also others who've seen that, you know, reasoning, you know, concerning whether Jesus, Yeshua had a wife did he also have children right and just asking that question what we said to him we said greetings brethren and family let's not get the many things confused point one here with this particular document is to jesus aka yeshua being in ethiopia during the new testament what's known as the nt times or new testament times this is the point one this is the main point even of this vlog right here now, the other idea concerning whether Jesus or Jesus, Iusu, Yeshua, whether he had a wife or whether he had a child or children, this other idea, we say allegation, not to dismiss it, or even truth concerning whether Yeshua had a wife or children, this comes from like other, other sources. This comes from other sources, other resources out there, such as... Uh, I think part of it is like Da Vinci, the Da Vinci Code, and then also there's, you know, speaking of the Merovingian, so forth and so on, and the, we could say a French connection, which definitely links with, in our estimation, many of us who also have that kind of French connection, so to speak, black people who move through those particular cultures. We know that even the Notre Dame, one of their main churches, it was called the Great Lady, because of the black Madonna and child. So there's a lot of history there as well. But first things first is to look at this New Testament testimony, right, of Yeshua, of Jesus being in Ethiopia. Let's first just establish this right here. So this is from the Ethiopian source, 
right, of the closeness and relationship between those who may be referred to as the black Jews, right, as 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 um, Beta Israel, as Ethiopia, and the one who is called, right, in the translations, Jesus Christ, Yeshua, Ha Moshiach. So that's the first thing right there. Now, the um, other sources, like you said, mentioned about the other sources, he was asked about that as well. The other sources, such as like the Da Vinci Code, right, and all that, you know, they they make other speculations. And when we say speculations, like we said, it's not to dismiss it, but just to put it until we start to really look into it and present certain facts or ones may even present certain facts and we can look into those particular facts. But this is the fact that we're presenting right here concerning this document here, Jesus in Ethiopia, the meeting between the father and the son, right? And does the New Testament and even the Old Testament scriptures give us any indication that there might be some nearness, approximation, closeness, link, connection between we could say the Ethiopia of the Bible, right? The Kush and the Ethiopia of the Bible and the Hebrews and the Israelites of the very same Bible. Do we have any evidence there? But now regarding the Da Vinci Code, the Merovingian kings and whether Yeshua and Mary Magdalene, you know, had a child, whether they went to, there's some stories and legends of them going to Europe you know, we do know of New Testament Israelites and Hebrews, right, going to parts and regions of the Mediterranean area, also going to parts of Arabia, going to parts of India, going to parts of Africa. We do have credible evidence of that as well from just the New Testament times, right? So, therefore, there's more to be reasoned on the whether Jesus had a wife and whether he had children, we need to go to those original like resources. What are the source or the resource on that? You know, um, so the source on this right here about Jesus in Ethiopia, right, which follows up on the Oriental churches, such as Ethiopia, the Coptic Church of Egypt, the Syrian, Armenian, and the Indian Church of India. They're the five sister churches does give us testimony concerning Yeshua as a babe and his mother going into Egypt, what is referred to as Egypt, but also into Ethiopia. We've found that within, you know, we say archaic Ethiopian, we say church and, and religious writings. You know, this is something that is testified to, that when Yeshua went to Egypt, as we have during the time of Herod's um, slaughter of the innocents, right? The children that he wanted to kill the Messiah, you know, even from a babe, right? That the testimony goes that he went to e Egypt. His family went to Egypt. Joseph and, and Mary and the child, right, went to Egypt. But they also went to Ethiopia, right? You want to point that out. And this is from an Ethiopian um, perspective. And it's also testified elsewhere within certain of the early, early church. When we say church writings, let's put it like this. Writings by the Nazarenes, the ones who were first called Christians, the early Christians, the apostles, and others that was in that general group, right? Then we have later on, nearly hundreds of years later, where some other traditions and ideas become prominent later on. So we have the early church period. You know, when we say the early church period, that's Yeshua, his disciples and apostles and all that that we have recorded in the New Testament. And then we have 400 years later where what they call Christianity becomes in many places the state or the official religion, even from that grassroots. So we have grassroots the grassroots Yeshua movement initially, that grassroots movement, and then later on where different ones saw the power of this and we get more of, you could say, the church 
as a kind of an organized, more as an organized, like, you know, state religion in certain places, namely in parts of the Middle East, but going to Eastern Europe, you know, Byzantium, and then flipping back into Rome, Italy, but also in parts of Arabia. We have the Nazarene movement and also in parts of, of East Africa, particularly, and Ethiopia, specifically, right? So this is the aspect of the history that we're seeking to zoom in on. Right? Not being dismissive of the other questions of whether Yeshua, Jesus had a wife and whether he had children, so forth and so on, because it can be, we can address this both from a biblical perspective, right, without being like Christian pharisaical. Because a lot of the Christians today, a lot of the church folks and the Christians today, they are likened to the Pharisees in this time of revelation, right? We have the revelation time of Old Testament Moshe. Right, the revelation in the New Testament, you know, concerning Yeshua, HaMoshiach of Nazareth, right? And then we also have in these latter days and time that new name, that precious name, Rastafari, Royal Order of the Ethiopian Hebrews, after the Order of Melchizedek. This is what we're speaking to right here. So it's this book as a historical point of reference of the other half of the story. What we get to find is that many of those things that ones might say are recorded, say, and kept preserved amongst the Ethiopian and maybe the Oriental churches, the other sister churches that were not a part of the Roman thing. They were of the what we call the original or the true doctrine, Tawahido, ones might say, right? others might refer to it as monophysitism. I don't know how many of you all are aware of that whole controversy and that whole reasonment there right so most will look at christianity that anybody who believe in jesus whether they are roman catholic or, or or oriental you know orthodox is all the same thing it's not all the same thing just like all of the jews even within the bible were not all the same thing even though commonly one will say the Jews, there'll be like Jesus over here and the Jews over there. But a careful reading of the Bible basically shows us that Yeshua, right, according to the translation, was a Jew, right, was a Yehudi. He said to the Samaritan woman, ye worship that which you know not. We know what we worship for salvation is of the Jews. So right here. Let's touch on this right here just a little bit on the backstory of this particular book right here. Jesus, Yeshua in Ethiopia, says a mysterious land, guardian monks, exotic locations, the Ark of the Covenant, and one of the most revealing stories ever discovered about the early years of Jesus Christ all come together in this intriguing true adventure well it would actually be the early years of yeshua or jesus of nazareth i mean if we really are to put things into a a proper and a better kind of historical you know context we're talking about the the young years the early years this there's a point here that we like to share right here let's see if we can do this right here it was from some of the notes, some of the notes that we had received from brother, um, from brother um, Lawrence right here, Lawrence Davis. But right here, we just we just have this as a placeholder right here, so we can see the revelation even coming to these last days. What revelation speaks of, and one of the most revealing stories ever discovered about the early years of Jesus Christ all come together in this intriguing true adventure it says jim rankin takes you on an indiana jones like exploration over deserts and mountains through jungles and across a massive lake to a forbidden island to open an ancient treasury housing one of the most fascinating finds in history to the whereabouts of the young yeshua so what we're speaking of here is the young yeshua Right? We say the young Jesus. Often we talk about Jesus Christ and about the cross and those matters right there. But let's um just put this here for a contrast here. So we see the one on the right 
right? More of the biblical, the true narrative. And the one on the left is the whitewash, right? The one on the right, right? They're the work by Alpha Tecla, um, um, uh, 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 yeah, the artists, by the artists, right? They're commissioned by His Imperial Majesty, right? Um, and this is the one that matches the ancient testimony, you know, concerning what the what the Virgin Saint Mary, this the Mariam, what she looked like, as well as Yeshua. And then we have what ones are more familiar with, especially in this latter day times of the Gentiles. What ones are more familiar with, namely the Caesar Bogiers, the Cratia Bogiers. That's actually the Cratia Bogiers, the whitewash on the left on the left side so right here in going into this from Jim's encounters in the hills of Tennessee Tensaye, Tennessee to his amazing adventures in the exotic mountains of Ethiopia a hidden secret will finally be answered as you come to the edge of your seat for this true-to-life God-led adventure this is just some of the write-up that he has here on the back of his book it's a heart-pounding trek to a mysterious heavenly summit. The journey begins in search of the lost Ark of the Covenant. What is called the lost Ark of the Covenant. <laughs> you know, like other people say, we got it. And other people say, well, it was lost. Well, you know. And turned into a revelation of biblical proportions. It's an adventure in truth that takes you on a search through the Bible to track down the location of never before revealed information that's for the western gentile christians especially on the whereabouts of the holy family and the truth behind their exodus from israel then it points out some more about jim ranking who he is and some of his research so forth and so on now to what Brother Lawrence has shared with us, I'd like to find just another maybe appropriate kind of still image, right, right here. Let's let let's use this. This is one of the right just a point to the Holy Family in that sense. Of course, um, sometimes uh, Joseph is left out, but he is part of the narrative, right? <laughs> right. Okay. So right here, this here is from his uh, Chimtim Kulu, traditionalist G. Malalazi of the global original heritage living in magnificent native culture country. Okay. Okay, so yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's just get through this here. Got, got a call coming in. We'll, 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 we'll deal with that after this, brothers and sisters. All right, um, let's do this right here. Okay, yes, sir. All right, so Yeshua, let's bring this up. Or Jesus, as it's written, Jesus had sojourned in Ethiopia, writes the traditionalist here, for 18 years. For 18 years where he became ship captain traveling globally as ship captain leading traders. This is according to traditionalist um G. Uh, Malalazi, right? He goes on to say that Jesus reached India, Zimbabwe, and Tibet. Um, Jesus became a Buddhist monk where he mastered meditation. The write up here says while in Ethiopia, he had the chance of marrying his cousin Mary Magdalene. Now we have some information on that as in our research on Mariam Magdaluit. Like Mag Magdala, Magdala, and Magdala, Mekdala. That this here now connects with the Tedros, Tewudros, right? Emperor Theodore, you know, narrative. We just came to the 155th year. You know, these are some of the, you know, art here, the Kurata Reissu, striking of the head, also heal up to the Magdala campaign of the Ethiopian World Federation Corporate, the first unit. Here we also have Ross Seymour McLean, you know, an honorable mention of Ross Gebra Menfes Kedus, right, and the work he did 
to liberate, you know, to liberate and to restore that which was taken from a place called Magdala. So you see the name right here, you see Magdala, right? You see Magdala right there, Magdala, right? This is one of the arts right here, something known as the striking of the head, Kurata Risu, right? You can see clearly the dreadlocks signification, also the kind of doppelganger likeness for, right, the king of kings, you know? father son you know the meeting of the father son more of the art in fact you can also see you know this symbol there you see the cross and the star of david which is becoming popular among so-called latter-day um jews especially among the european jews for jesus but we can already see that in ethiopia there was already this acknowledgement you know, going back now 155 years ago, and it goes even much deeper than that, right, to Old Testament time. So it's during the time of Teudros, right? So the Magdala, right, connection with Magdala and Mary Magdalene, as well as to certain documentation um, from the Tigra, more from the northern heritage of Ethiopia, Right, of our divine heritage, Tigra heritage, concerning the connection of Mary Magdalene being an Ethiopian. Right? So we want to point that out as well. So this is also another point that many ones are connecting certain dots. You know, some of this information we and others did bring forward years ago, but with social media there is a greater you know ability for information to be shared and hopefully vetted and we can find the truth about these matters so once again according to this right here while in ethiopia the chance of marrying his cousin mary magdalene you know what's interesting about the marriage at cana right remember the marriage at cana we we never really find out well who exactly was getting married you know, it's just a very interesting point that some of us point to. And also the Kana, Kana and the Kana Bosom, Kana Bosom, right? The, you know, Kana, the place, Kana, and the connection with cannabis from the Hebrew perspective, the Kana Bosom. I know ones might want to run with that, but please stay tuned for the teaching and the evidence, the facts. After his crucifixion, his body was stolen by his disciples and family and reburied in Ethiopia in the land of his wife. Now, this is what is pre presented by one named his Chetimkulu, traditionalist G. Malalazi. So we're not co-signing this, but just sharing it for further follow-up, right? The family of Yeshua were also hidden in Ethiopia and multiplied. Yeshua's family still lives on earth among black people. The British and Italian military expeditions had attacked Ethiopia to vandalize historical archaeological evidences of black Jesus of Nazareth. And this is fact. And to steal the original Ark of the Covenant. Zimbabwe um, mansions, right, or Masions, Masions, it says here, were also attacked um, where a copy of the Ark of the Covenant was found among the Lemba people. So even the Lemba people, who are said to even have genealogical DNA relations to what many of the DNA scientists and those who are in the science say connects them to, you know, the Israelites, and in particular to, I think, the family of Levi, of Le Levi. So um, this is a very interesting article. I would say, based on what we read, about 75 to maybe 85 percent we can directly substantiate right with um probably several pieces of evidence you know there are some other aspects of it where we put a strong question mark especially the part about the disciples stealing his body right and reburying him in ethiopia in the land of his wife that particular aspect we put strong quotes right there but there is a connection of mary magdalene 
right, to Magdala, Magdala, Magdalene. Actually, it's Magdala, Magdala. It's for like a K, a Q, a, a, a special K, a kind of Q, Magdala, Magdala. But often you see it in the different translations as Magdala because both of those can apply, both of those soundings of it. That, that meeting and marrying his cousin, Mary Magdalene, one thing we can say that is pretty strongly substantiated by the evidence we've seen is the Ethiopian connection of Mary Magdalene and also the place Magdala, Magdala, so forth and so on, right? I think that's in the northern, the northern, the Tigra, right? So the question we might ask following up was Mary Magdalene, was she Tigrayan? Was she Tigrayan or of that Afro-Semitic, Afro-Shemitic stock right there? As it's also linked that the Queen of Sheba also may have had, you know, northern stock that connects her with both sides of the Red Sea the Yemen side, Saba, Sheba, and the Ethiopian side, right? You know, two sides. It's like the P Potomac. When you talk about the Potomac, right? Both sides of it is still America. So both sides of those is still part of that Ethiopian, Sabian, you know, Afro-Shemitic connection right there, there, there. So brothers and sisters, sisters and brothers, just a little bit on this right here get into a little bit more of the content of this it's a very interesting read and there'll be even a more interesting reasoning and study hopefully ones and ones can get a copy of the document that we present here become a little more informed about the Magdala also brothers and sisters please uh, share and sign the petition we have the official um, first unit constitutional membership petition for the return of the Magdala collection the stolen art and facts. So here, just sharing on the outro here, a connection with Teudros. Now it's interesting because Teudros also was seen by some to be a type of a, a messiah, but definitely most of the kings upon the throne of David in Ethiopia technically are messiahs in the sense of the anointing, right? The anointing that they are to receive. Right? And the anointing that the conquering line of the tribe of Judah, Kedemawi Hala Selassie, did receive November 2nd, 1930. The coronation and the anointing. That is the messianic right, connection right there. So brothers and sisters, sisters and brothers, get a copy, get a copy, get a copy. Right? Get a read. Hopefully we'll follow up, go through a little bit more on this right here. Yeshua Bekush. Right, Yeshua be Ethiopia, be Tobia, Jesus in Ethiopia, the meeting between the Father and the Son. Shalom, Chabarim, Shalom, Shabbat Shalom. Follow up on this more. Hopefully, get some book um some some book clubs, right? Some book clubs, you know, and certain books. Hopefully, we can focus on in certain seasons and certain time. You know, like for, force multiplication, consciousness multiplication, and also have a reason that will be published. Yes, I, Rastafari.